Hi everyone, it's Danilo and this is my new brand new video that is um, gonna be different from my other videos because here we are gonna do something new. So what's we, what are we gonna do? Um, so here we will create a brand new project. So this will be a program written in Java uh, that uh, will be quite a consistent like separate project which could be used and what kind of project will it be um, so maybe you know maybe you're not there is something called the game of life or Conway's game of life proposed by John Harden Conway in 1970 so what kind of game is this this is what they call the zero player game so basically it's not really a game because uh, what you do is you just mm, play some black squares on an infinite grid and this game evolves itself and produces something like this. Um, so I really encourage you to google it what the game of life is really about. It's quite an interesting thing and there are um, there are some interesting videos by number file uh, where they interview uh, Conway himself uh, who has passed away recently and um, there are many interesting videos on this topic so I really encourage you to watch them if you don't know about the game right now so what we're gonna do is to create a Java Swing project uh, so that you can place these dots and uh, just to see how the game of life evolves so basically game of life is something like like an analog for real life but made with pixels and it's something quite interesting you uh, can come up with some philosophy uh, based on this thing how, how can life emerge for from something like so uh, from like these four rules which define all the life and how it like may be infinite may be uh, may end in some point so it's an interesting topic so anyway uh, we're gonna create this project and um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a jar file uh, so that uh, everyone can use this project possibly uh, I may also create an .exe file, dot, uh, exe file, so that you can download it on Windows. Uh, but the main thing is to just create the game itself. So it is what we are gonna do here. So um, I'm not sure how long this video will be. Maybe I'll uh, create uh, um, some kind of series of videos uh, all about this project. Uh, we'll see. So, okay, let's start with creating a new project in IntelliJ IDEA. Uh, and I don't think I'll cut out anything from this video. Maybe I'll just cut out uh, uh, some parts of the video where I don't code, but I'm gonna show you everything I do so that you can see. Yeah, uh, so what are we gonna do? I have this um, in ultimate version of IntelliJ IDEA. So I have mm, some kind of different settings for creating a new project. But what am I going to do is to create a Maven project because ba Maven basically gives you a template and a structure that you can use to uh, use different libraries and it's quite convenient to use. So I'm going to go along with Maven. So now I'm going to create a new project uh, with a name and let's call it Game of Life. Java to indicate that it's written in Java and uh, we should also give some group ID coordinates for Maven project let's say org um, um, game of life GOL and uh, I don't know YT for YouTube for let it be like this and version we're gonna leave it as it is so we're creating we're creating a new project 
uh, open this project in this window and uh, basically when everything is set up we can start uh, programming uh, but what I'm gonna do is uh, is that I need to specify the version of Java in Maven because sometimes you have that problems with Maven then when it thinks you you're using a different version of Java so here in IntelliJ IDEA I use Java 14 uh, and uh, I also should Google how to use uh, Java uh, Java 14 in Maven so uh, let's Google uh, Java 14 Maven and let's just see how okay uh, so how do we do this we just should include this code snippet and this should help us I guess yeah mm, let's reload the maven project and I think we are good to go uh, so why did I set up the maven itself because I think that we are gonna use some libraries um, at least uh, some visual libraries maybe but we'll see anyway uh, let's continue to uh, work with our project and here in the Java uh, folder I'm gonna create a new package and let's call it com uh, core uh, because it will be the core the central part of our game and here let's create a new class uh, that actually uh, we should have uh, two different um, we should have two different um, like distinctions between logic and um, front-end and visuals so I think I'm gonna start with front-end so I'm gonna create the class called um, main class that will start our program and also I'm gonna create a new package that I'm that I'm gonna call comcore front-end and let's move the main class although main class is not really a front-end but let's anyway put it there okay so what about our main class the first thing we should do is to uh, make this enter this code snippet to bank dot invoke later mm, if I spelled it all oh, right the first thing we should do is to create a main method public static void main yeah do not forget to do this and uh, now event queue dot invoke later that will help us to properly set up the uh, thread that uh, works with visuals and with front-end so now we're gonna create this code snippet and here we're gonna uh, put our code, code itself and why is it in red squiggly line because lambda expressions are not supported in language 5 so we are still in language 5 for some reason and um, and I don't really understand why maybe this code snippet didn't really work um, what we can do is to go to maven and reload project and let's see looks like it didn't really help us we can set language to 8 but it's not really what we want to do so here we have 8 we can also check the Java compiler uh, but uh, I'm not sure that it has something to do with compiler and it has Java version oh yeah it has to do with compiler and here we can also set 14 and uh, does it still show 5 okay so let's let's see what Google says about it and let's see let's see Java 14 um, not sure maybe stack overflow will help us um, so configuration well um, 
Yeah, um, police. Yeah, that's. Mm, not sure why. Not sure why. Maybe we should. Yeah, that's all about coding. You encounter that problems, and you're just trying to solve them. Yeah, this is a common error that I always encounter with these Maven projects, but it should help to put this code snippet. Okay, I have a different idea. We can Google how to how to uh, set Maven Java version to eight. Yeah, maybe this will help. Um, yeah, I think, I think this one should work and we should just change it to 14, I guess. Let's reload the project and yeah, it has worked. Perfect. So let's continue working with our front end. We're gonna, front end, we're gonna create the main frame, which will be the main window in our program. And here, what I'm gonna do is to say main frame extends J frame and uh, now public main frame and we basically create a new constructor. So in the main frame, I'm gonna, what am I gonna do is to um, set up the resolution of our screen and to set up the different configuration that we should set up, like set default close operation, exit on close, set um, size, uh, toolkit uh, dot get default toolkit dot get screen size and uh, set extended state um, I guess maximize both maximize both yeah uh, and uh, also what we're gonna do is to create a main class here main class uh, wait a second main frame right main frame main frame equals to new main frame and um, what should we do is to main frame dot set visible true. So basically we create a new main frame, assign it to a new main frame variable, but since it is not visible in the, in the default configurations in our, uh, um, in our constructor, uh, we use this variable that uh, that can be used to set the mainframe visible because it refers to the only mainframe we created. Uh, so yeah, and now we can start our program and see if we get a new mainframe or not. And let's see, looks like we do, although it is not extend it properly I guess but it is not really a problem at least for now so the, we have the main frame and it works and uh, the next thing we're gonna do is that uh, we're gonna create the infinite grid and uh, this is the part where at least I see the problem for now because it should be infinite and to make it infinite um, what we, we cannot just create an infinite uh, two dimensional array and use it because no one allows infinite things although we can create a very large uh, very large uh, array uh, I mean two dimensional array and to use it but it doesn't seem to be very elegant solution to the problem 
because we will be wasting a lot of memory although yeah it's a good question it's a good question what we should do to implement this because you know these uh, game of life creatures can extend to infinite um, to infinite positions in the grid and uh, yeah maybe we should create a very large array but then we would have some problems on the edges of the array um, yeah this is a tough question to answer right now but I think it would be easier to just stick to a very large two-dimensional array for now so I'm gonna go to paint and to illustrate what I'm doing I'm gonna uh, draw it so what we're gonna do is first to create a very large uh, two-dimensional array so here we have our two-dimensional array here will be something like the zero and at the end we will have something like a thousand and the same will go for the vertical axis um, yeah and the center will be something like 500 to 500 and it will be just a very very large grid so this is how we can visualize what's going on because we are not making logic itself for now uh, for the game of life but we just gonna create the representation of it although logic and the actual representation are uh, very strictly tightened together I guess so I think we should think ahead and do not make any stupid things and uh, so let me think so in game of life we have that grid a very 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 large grid and the rules are very simple we have very simple rules the rules are these four rules um, so the universe of the game of life is infinite two-dimensional orthogonal grid of square cells each of which is one of two possible states alive or dead or populated and or unpopulated every cell interacts with its eight neighbors uh, which are the cells that, that are horizontally vertically and diagonally adjacent at each step in the time the following transition occurs any li uh, live cell and a living cell with fewer than two live neighbors dies any live cell with two or uh, three live neighbors lives any live cell with more than three live neighbors dies and any dead cell with exactly three live number uh, neighbors exactly three live neighbors becomes a live cell so we should somehow implement these rules in, in the logic of our game and uh, I'm not gonna dive deep uh, to it right now so I guess we will have a two-dimensional array in the logic itself and the grid that we're gonna create to visualize it will just um, observe what's going on in these in this grid and just to put the uh, yellow or white boxes depending on what's in the grid so yeah I think we can go on creating it and to do this I'm gonna create a new class uh, that will extend the J component uh, class because it will be a it will be a square grid that is a component inside our frame so let's call it um, um, game component and let's extend it to J component so this is a subclass of J component and now let's create a constructor for it and uh, what we're gonna do is to override the paint component method so paint component and here we go with it we can um, actually draw different things and uh, and yeah this is like the 
method which which we are using for the painting things. So yeah, this one could stay protected because it is cold from above. Uh, it is cold from um, some threads that have to do with the drawings, with the front end, and they go uh, basically the superclass method paint component and so it can be protected and I think it's a good idea to leave it as protected for now. So what uh, we're doing in Java in more recent versions is we're casting uh, the graphics to uh, graphics to D because uh, because it's actually a graphics 2D object, which is a subclass of graphics, and uh, we can always cast it back to graphics 2D to in order to use it uh, to use more advanced features. So yeah, uh, what we're gonna do is uh, to have a private variable, which will be, I guess. Um, I guess what we're gonna do now is to create a new package, which will be core, uh, com core logic, and in logic, we're gonna create a grid, which will be an actual uh, grid, which will mm, which will work with logic of this grid. So the grid uh, will have a two-dimensional array. So private, uh, I think it will be a boolean array, which will indicate if the cell is dead or alive. So boolean uh, double array grid or grid cells, I guess. And let's initialize it to new boolean and let's give it uh, the dimensions. So it will be let's say size size which we will define here as a static members I guess public maybe public static final and size should be equal to let's say thousand for now yeah so this will be a static variable that we can manipulate to change the size of course, we can only manipulate it before the actual start of the program because it's a final variable and it's a static variable. So, and I'm not gonna do any logic here for now. I'm just gonna create a, a getter method, which will basically, I think we can do it like this, getter and yeah, get grid cell. Uh, yeah, uh, so I'm not gonna actually uh, create a different uh, boolean array uh, because you know if we return the uh, actual link or reference to the uh, boolean array someone can manipulate it but uh, I'm gonna leave it f as it is and uh, it's quite dangerous to do it but I think it's good for now uh, so what we're gonna do is to here we're gonna have a grid private grid grid which we can probably initialize here new grid because it does not have any arguments in the constructor it does not have any explicit constructor so we have a, an implicit no argument constructor going on there so and basically here I'm gonna uh, use this grid in the paint component method which the paint component method will be executed every time we change the window size or when we manipulate in some uh, kind uh, of uh, if we do something with the frame and we can also call this method using the repaint method so yeah and here what we can do is to create a double array I guess and uh, we're gonna draw the grid itself how are we gonna draw the grid? I think uh, we're gonna do it the next way. So let's say we have a double array because this is a square grid. We can just use it for loop for uh, i is less than grid uh, that size. 
or I guess get yeah I guess we should first uh, return the grid cells which will be grid dot get grid cells and actually I think no let's leave it as it is so grid cells and let's actually make it not a bar but boolean to be more explicit in our code grid cells that size or that length yeah that length and uh, here we do the same grid cells of zero dot length uh, we could just use dot length because it has the same length in vertical in both vertical and horizontal directions but let's just be consistent like it, it should uh, this w or code will work even if we have non-square matrix so let's leave it as it is so yeah and now let's say boolean alive or cell is alive or just yeah cell is alive would be equal to grid cells of i of j uh, and yeah if it is alive we should indicate it as yellow and if, if it, and if it's not we should uh, not indicate it as yellow so we can say if cell is alive we can uh, draw the the actual uh, what do you call it um, the actual square so what I'm starting to think about is that we cannot draw actually thousand by thousand grid because it'll be too large so what I what I'm thinking of is we can have like a camera that will show only the part of the uh, actual grid so what we can do is to say that we have a camera component inside our, uh, inside our, um, what do you call it, in, inside our grid, and if somehow we should show only part of it. Mm, and I have some ideas, uh, and yeah, I think uh, we should stop here for now for this video, and in the next video we're gonna continue from this point and to implement this camera feature uh, so yeah thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed it and you like this kind of videos although they are quite long and quite um they may be not very funny but i think they can be very interesting in some way so uh, if you have any any suggestions or any things you want to say you can leave the comment uh, below in this video uh, so if you want to you can press the like button or any kind of other buttons I mean the dislike button of course and uh, subscribe to my channel uh, and uh, thank you for watching see you next time bye bye